Today we're going to be repairing our Mavic 2 Pro that recently ran into some concrete problems. In this video, we're going to go through how to assess the damage, determine its repairability, where to source parts for the drone, and then finally how to fix and test the drone. My name's Ian and this is Coastal Drone, so let's get started. To follow our standard operating procedures, we would have needed to respond to this incident in the following manner. Step one would have been to ensure that the drone wasn't a hazard to any persons as a result of the post-crash fire or spinning propellers or debris. We've done that. We're done flying for the day. Step two would be to ensure the battery is safe to handle and not a fire hazard at this point or in the future due to a puncture or some damage. We check that, that's done too. Step three is gonna to be to start filling out the incident report and describing the circumstances of the event. Particulars of the location, any damage to property, persons, or to the aircraft itself. And during that process, we need to identify if the occurrence is immediately reportable or not. So what are the requirements to make this an event that's reportable? If any person was severely injured or killed, or if in any contact was made with an aircraft, you must immediately report the event to the Transportation Safety Board. Additionally, if any of the operation was under a Special Flight Operation Certificate, the occurrence must immediately be reported to Transport Canada as well as the Transportation Safety Board. Just remember, drone pilots are required to create an incident report form and keep that as an internal record for a minimum of 12 months which is to be produced upon request by the Minister of Transportation. The requirements for the incident report form are listed in the Transport Canada Aviation Information Manual, or the AIM, and list particulars such as date, time, pilot flying, location, damage, and a narrative of the occurrence. It is required to determine the cause or causes of the accident and provide analysis to prevent reoccurrence. To do this, we'll need to build a narrative of the event. The narrative of the occurrence should be as detailed as possible and document multiple accounts depending on the severity of the incident. The more detailed the report, the more opportunity there is for information sharing and hopefully prevention of a repeat event in the future. For this particular event, the narrative is the pilot was shooting it within a visual line of sight of the drone and had a visual observer also with them as well. It appears that the pilot experienced control confusion and instead of going right, went left and slid into the building. Let's consider what we could do to prevent this from happening again. I always try to tell people in training that if you're flying in close proximity to any obstacle, don't take your eyes off the drone while it's moving. Don't worry about what's on the screen. If you have to operate the camera and the drone at the same time, you should have a visual observer. You're gonna to want to establish a verbal call-out system with your crew that will give you either a countdown or a distance or some sort of warning that you're getting too close to the object. So if you're flying and they say, okay, you have an obstacle coming up in five, four, three, two, one, stop. That stop is not you're gonna hit the building. That stop is you're gonna give yourself an established buffer that you're both comfortable with, like a meter or five meters. Another way to avoid the obstacle entirely is by placing the drone nearest to the hazard and then flying away from it. You could always reverse that shot and post as long as people or cars or something obvious isn't in the shot that would show that the footage is being played backwards. Now that the reporting and regulatory requirements are taken care of, we gotta deal with this broken drone. Let's consider the repairability of the drone first and whether we should spend any more time or money on it. So this is a Mavic 2 Pro. It came out in 2018 and it features a one inch Hasselblad sensor and it shoots video up to 4K resolution at 30 frames a second. And it will shoot in 10-bit log, so it's actually pretty competitive in terms of camera capability. The batteries are still in good condition the per and the performance of the drone is still good. So those factors alone, it pretty much makes it a good candidate for repair as long as the cost of repairing it isn't too high. Let's talk about cost. So this Mavic is a commercial tool and we are a commercial business. What that means is if we can still generate content from the drone that customers are satisfied with and it meets their requirements, then it still has commercial value. It may not be the latest and greatest, and it may not be the prettiest. If the footage that it shoots is great, then, and the cost of repair isn't exceeding what the nominal value of it is these days, it's worth repairing. Should we repair this Mavic in particular, or should we just buy another one? Before we start with the obvious damage, we need to look at the most expensive component on the drone and make sure that it's still good. The camera module on a Mavic 2 Pro based on what I could find online for spare parts is roughly $400. So what we're gonna do is in order to test it, we'll power it on, make sure that the camera works, make sure the signal coming out of it is good, and that we can move the gimbal up and down and it's not stuck or any kind of concerns there. So let's get to that. 
So we'll put the battery in, make sure that the props are all spread out because it will do a self test when you power it on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the controller. And the next thing we're gonna do is turn on the drone. It's not gonna spin the props, but what we wanna know for sure is whether or not the gimbal is good on the drone. And let's go onto the controller. And what I'm looking at is does the gimbal move so the gimbal seems to be fine all the way up. Down to minus 90. Yep, you can actually pan left or right with the gimbal. And it looks like that's fine too. Camera's good. That's the important thing, right? So let's power back down. So the gimbal looks fine. And like I said, if not, I would probably determine that this drone isn't worth repairing just based on the cost of that alone. So let's look at some of the more obvious damage now at this point. Battery is fine. Like I said, it's nice and flat. This isn't the battery that was with it, but the other one was good. Obviously we've got a bit of an issue here on the right arm and then the left arm, it was scuffed up and damaged a little bit as well. I've already unscrewed this, but that's, I basically, these are the antenna modules. They cover over the antennas. So this entire thing, basically at this point, um, it looks like we're gonna wanna do two full arm replacements. And the reason I'm saying that, like even though this spins fine is, as a drone pilot, we have liabilities that we need to worry about. What if this drone falls out of the sky and injures someone in the future because we skipped an important step during this repair or we use some substandard parts? So from my perspective, I'm thinking we should replace both complete full arm assemblies. All right, let's talk about where you can get some drone parts. So I'm here on the West Coast in Canada and there really isn't any DJI authorized service centers near me that I could just drive to. A DJI authorized service center is gonna have factory original equipment, manufactured parts, and they're gonna be trained by DJI in order to service the drone exactly as it should be. I don't know what the turnaround time is gonna be for anything in your area, but it could be seven to 10 days, if not a couple of weeks, depending on supply. The next option is to send it directly back to the manufacturer, in this case, DJI. If you have Care Refresh, which is DJI's extended warranty, they would most likely end up just replacing it with either a brand new or a refurbished unit, and you wouldn't get back your original drone. And here's something that's important to remember about that if you're replacing your drone from the manufacturer. If you use Care Refresh to replace your drone, you will get a new serial number, so the number that's inside and you must put that new serial number on Transport Canada's drone management portal and update your registration or use the same registration. If you don't, it's not gonna match your drone. Don't forget to put a new sticker on your drone as well in case you get a new one from the factory. So a little bit about carry fresh and insurance uh, and coverage of your, your drone or your hull. This drone, you have the ability to run uh, aftermarket warranty like DJI Care Refresh. I would probably consider sticking with that for your hull insurance for the drone, as long as it also covers like complete loss. So if you lose the drone in the ocean and you're able to prove it to DJI, if they will cover it, then it's worth that. If you're building something that's custom or uh, has a lot of components that, e that aren't easily replaced through a retail manner, then you might wanna look at hull insurance through an actual aviation insurance provider. Price might be cheaper, it might be more expensive. It's something to compare and do your research based on what providers are in your area. In the case that we aren't gonna repair this ourselves, what about third-party repair options? A lot of the stuff that's inside your drone is very similar to either a smartphone or a laptop. So no, any electronic repair store may be willing to at least take a look at your drone and kind of give you an idea of the repairability. They're gonna to need to have access to parts and they're also gonna to need to have access to servicing information. And you'll probably wanna find someone who's comfortable of doing soldering work because in most cases, most repairs of these will probably involve disconnecting or desoldering and resoldering motor controllers. The important thing to remember though is if you're not comfortable with electronics repair or not comfortable with taking things apart, have someone qualified look at your drone. And ultimately, as the owner of the drone and pilot in command, you are responsible for the safety of this airframe. If this drone falls out of the sky due to either a subsequent motor failure or an IMU failure or something else that's a result of a botched repair, it's your responsibility because you chose to operate that drone. Realistically, if you have any doubt at all about the quality of your drone or the reliability of it going forward, the best time to replace it and retire this one is now. And no matter who conducts the repair, it is up to you as pilot in command to make sure that the repairs are logged, even if you send it off to get repaired by a third party. If you send it into a repair facility, the person conducting the repairs will most likely give you a list of things they did. Then it's up to you, the pilot in command, to make sure that all of those maintenance 
actions or repairs are logged in the drone's maintenance logbook. All of that aside, I have an IT computer background and I'm comfortable dealing with wiring and solder and diagnosing electronic problems. Not to really like deep component level, but enough to do what we're doing here. We've taken a look at the damage and I've gone on the internet, I've taken a look at eBay and looking through a few different suppliers, I ended up on Cloud City Drones. I ordered the parts on Tuesday last week and I had them in my office the next day from the East Coast for a total of 122 US dollars. What's in this box? I don't know yet, but hopefully it's two complete assemblies of the arms, which includes the motor, the wiring, the antenna module, the pigtail that goes to the main board, uh, and everything's pre-wired. All I need to do is basically take this apart, replace it, and solder it. And before we do that, we're gonna need to take a look at what we've got for tools. Clean surface, right? It's not any dust or anything else. I've got a micro tool set here that's got drivers and disassembly equipment, a soldering station. And the reason I'm recommending a soldering station is I've got the hot air gun or hot air blower for forming up components. And then I've also got a precision wand. I need to be able to adjust my temperatures and not just use like, it can be something like this big Weller gun. This is a 500 watt or a 1500 watt. They're not very precise and they're meant more for just doing wire repair. Whereas something like this is gonna be meant for component repair. You're also gonna to wanna to have some flux. So flux is used to clean up the joints and, and make it bond a little better. We're gonna get this out of the way. And you wanna have lead free solder. This is leaded solder. Rosin core, there we go. This is pretty thick, but that'll work. And then if you wanna also use desoldering braid, if you can't get any, get some thick speaker wire. It's all copper, because copper is really good at absorbing and dr drawing away heat. So you place this over top and it will wick away the solder as long as it's hot enough. So let's start with a teardown of the drone. Let's get our tools out of the way to start. So we are going to be replacing these props. So let's get rid of these. All four of them are more or less toast. Goodbye. Let's make sure we got the right parts before we get too crazy in here. If you're in Canada, there is a there was a customs charge on top of the shipping. That's not terrible. And honestly, like they, they came fast, like the next day. So that's pretty good. Okay, so we have one Mavic arm module, complete with capped on tape uh, over the thing. And it's got the pigtail, like I said. The motor looks nice. And this is the left front. So that definitely matches up with that. That's, that's a good sign. Hopefully this is not also a left. That lines up nice. So the other thing is there is a, the airframe serial numbers on the front of the old arm. So we'll, we'll swap that over afterwards. Plastic feel look. Everything about, I'm pretty certain these are genuine replacements. I think they're marketed as genuine replacements as well. I, I'm not instilling any doubt. I just, you always want to double check, right? Cause, and you also want to double check that you got the right units. Tearing apart the drone was pretty straightforward. Be sure to ground yourself to dispel any static charge that you might have. You want to be careful to keep the screws organized in a relatively similar way as how they came off the drone. Should use a plastic pry tool or spudger to remove the tiny ribbons and the antenna cables. It's a good idea to take a photo of the wiring before desoldering them as a good reference. You should be able to remove the wire but leave the pad with a decent bead of solder if you're careful. The front arms use a spring-loaded cam system to hold them open during flight. This gave me a lot of trouble putting them back together, so take your time trying not to ram anything in there. When soldering in the new wires, there are slots to help with holding the leads against the pads. You should be very careful to not get any wire or solder joining any pads and potentially causing a short. Double check all your pads and look for any of the loose beads before reassembling the entire drone.
Once everything's back together, you're gonna to wanna to do a power on test in a safe area. And for our instance, we decided to take it up to the roof. Let's head there now. Okay, so we've got a battery, got a new set of props. Drone is hopefully okay, but we'll see. Put a new set of props on, put a battery in it, and we're gonna see if either this thing powers up okay, or we have an internal short, and then we have a fire. So that's why we're doing this up on the roof real quick. We're not gonna mess with the propellers. First thing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the battery in. So this battery's got about 60% state of charge. There is a fire extinguisher right over there. So we'll just be sure. I'm gonna power the controller on first. And like I said, I already looked at the power distribution board, right? Made sure that there wasn't any little pieces of wire or anything like that. Should be okay, but first power on on any drone is always a little stressful. If it smokes, it's just gonna smoke. It's not gonna burst or anything into flames. So we'll put the battery in, power's off already. And if I do have a problem, I've left the props off, I can grab this thing and quickly get rid of the battery. Okay, so tapity tap. That's a good sign. I don't hear any crackling. Doesn't smell bad. Gimbal's responding. And the rough gimbal's panning, so everything here looks good. I'm just gonna start the motors. Sweet. That one's spinning in, that one's spinning in, spinning out, spinning out. So it's doing what it's expected. So I think we're good for props. So I'm gonna turn it back off. Okay, we got a new set of low noise props from the Mavic 2 with any propellers, right? You're gonna be looking at, you've got silver and black and silver and black, right? So we're looking at, oh, you know what? We might be missing. Um, so anyway, there's a silver ring on the propeller. Goes onto the silver ring on the back. In this case, push it down onto the center and then rotate the bell so that it locks. Find the other silver ring. It should be over here, but something's missing. So that replacement arm I got, I didn't install the top mount yet. So we got to go back and do that in a minute. That's weird. I don't know why that one didn't come with one, but this one did. It just didn't have it on the bell. Okay, so that's it. End of video. At least we know it works. It spins up. I will, at the end of this video, put a shot of it hovering and I'll hold up a newspaper to prove that I didn't fake it. Here is the first takeoff test with the new props. Okie dokie, so we're back in the air here. And uh, so far so good. We're gonna do a quick turnaround check. So we're gonna make sure it rotates fine. Does exactly what we want it to. Up, down. Okay, someone's messed with the tuning a little bit. Let's go backwards first, forwards, left, right. And it's in tripod mode. Okay, let's bring it down. And let's draw a box of ourselves. That's exposure, gimbal. Okay, there we go. So it's all fixed. Okay, bit of an update here. I didn't record after I said goodbye and then I realized the drone climbed up to about 80 meters and kept going and would not descend no matter what to the point where it thought it was close to the ground. And I had to go into obstacle avoidance and turn it off and turn everything off in the downward facing sensor. So there is a problem with the downward facing sensor is that shame on me, I should have checked because the thing was sitting up at about 80 meters, 90 meters and thought it was gonna land and just sat there and the battery was burning. So we're back on the ground now, but uh, yeah, something is wrong with the downward facing time of flight sensor or that. So definitely not returned to service yet and should have done a full sensor test before bringing it full into the air. So we're gonna power down and we're gonna hook it up to DJI Assistant and figure out what's going on with it, but not today because it's already five o'clock. Thanks, bye.